Hello, hello, everybody. Let me make sure I just turn this off on here. How's it going? Happy Thursday. Last Thursday of the month. Came here quicker than I expected. Oh my gosh, Cinderella starting off the day with a goat. Thank you, sweet little angel. Again, you guys, it is Cinderella who chose this guy. Again, she's taking advantage of it. I'm seeing that I'm jumpy. Hold on a second. Am I jumpy to you guys, like choppy? Does anything seem weird or off at the moment? Because I look frozen from here and that's annoying. Looks okay to you? Oh, it's not choppy to you? Okay, well, if it's not choppy to you, we're gonna just go for it. What I was saying was, sweet Cinderella takes advantage of me saying that, send me pictures of stuff you wanna paint and we'll paint it. Cutie Miss Piggy was uh, her choice. A couple, I think it was like three weeks or something ago, or three weeks, two paint nights ago, I guess, or two months ago that you requested this. We snuck in a Highland cow for Nikki. I don't know if Nikki's here today. Um, Cause it was her birthday. So we did that first. Now we've got Miss Piggy. Um, before I forget, I've done it wrong on other streams before too. The original artist of this Miss Piggy in the little bottom corner down here, Thomas Webb. I'm gonna have to confirm that because another paint night, I was saying the real artist's name wrong the entire time. So know that this Miss Piggy that we're seeing at the bottom, this beautiful creation down there, isn't my original work. It's an artist named Thomas Webb. I'm gonna confirm that in a little bit here when we're at a painting part. Um, but look how cute she is. Oh, we love it. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. There's a couple different ways we could have did it, but we'll see. You know that I, if you follow me on Instagram, you, hello, Infinite Siller. Hello, Stacking Like Pringles too. I didn't say hi to you either, hello. Um, this is, these are the shapes, you guys. If you squint really hard at that reference photo, does that not just look? exactly the same that's all we're doing a couple circles a couple eggs a couple beans hello hello everybody um that might help a little bit her shirt's cut off we are not drawing her hand i'm telling you right now we're ignoring the hand who likes to paint hands let's just cover my face there instead we'll put that there you love when the shapes come out when the shapes come out, you know that I had to take a second to think about how we're going to do this. <laughs> because actually, this is the first drawing. Again, same, same. But sometimes I just have to draw it out first before we go. Usually I do it on the fly. Thanks for the fireworks, stacking. Black Pringles. I love that. Um... <laughs> I didn't I wasn't able to promote this as much this week. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on that I can talk about in a couple weeks um, So thanks to the few of you that made it who saw my few little stories that I posted um, Please let me know if my internet's lagging to you guys Because um, that'll bring me back to old apartment days where the internet so and we should have good internet here So ignore that um, Other than that Welcome to Thursday paint night we're painting Miss Piggy. Um, a couple things I'll go over quick. You can use a pencil if you want to start. I'm gonna use paint, but use a pencil if you feel like it. Don't treat your painting too precious. None of our paintings, not even mine, none of ours are gonna look like this. None of them, they're all gonna look different and that's the beauty of paint night, okay? Remember that. Um, there's no such thing as mistakes. We're using acrylic paint. Acrylic paint covers over most things. Um, uh, all things really depending on paint quality. That's another story. Um, you're going to have to trust the process because halfway through, look, your Miss Piggy is going to look like this. And if you didn't know to trust the process, you'd give up because you'd be like, um, I didn't come here to draw a stick figure pig. Okay. And I know that. So you trust the process. <laughs> we'll have a cutie something Miss Piggy at the end. 
Number five, water is our friend. Important, we're using acrylic paint. I'm gonna be telling you about bringing extra water. Usually paint, like not usually. <laughs> I just read something at the same time. I'm gonna tell you about how much paint or water you should have the time. Um, sometimes we want lots of water, a little bit of paint. Sometimes you want lots of paint, hardly any water. I'll be talking you through that. And number six is we're just having fun, okay? It's a nice time to get together with friends. Whether you're watching this now with everybody in the peanut gallery that we like to see here, or if you're on YouTube watching this in the future, I think this will be a well-liked one out there for sure. Oh, I love this little woman. Also, no, this is a warning for this one, a little different. Colors are going to be tough on this, okay? They're going to be hard to match. Don't worry about it. Any pink you have, any red you have, that's cool. We're going to make her a little more pinky than she is beige. If you have a beige color, use it. But don't stress about color too much. You can always do the painting again another time with the right colors if you love it that much. Infinite Silver Thursday paint nights. We all wish it was twice a month, but that will stay as a thought. <laughs> You guys, I know, maybe someday it'll come back. I just whew, found enough time in a day, that's all. But who knows, maybe one day I'll just be like, boom, surprise drop, we're painting something, let's go. You never know. So, with that, let's just paint Miss P, okay? Are we ready, Freddy's? Um, when we're talking, are you still doing private online paint nights? Oh, heck yeah. That is always something that I offer. So if anybody is interested in that, send me an email. I have a little spiel. Um, I can do private in-person ones where I can come to you with supplies or I can do private online ones where I don't bring supplies. I know that you are in a different province. So yep, yep, yep. If you ever have a question about me doing anything art related, I probably do. <laughs> so always feel free to send me an email. It might take me a little bit to get to the email, but I'll get to it. Um, but most things art related I do. Illustrate children's books, teach paint nights, teach classes at certain places, do murals, whatever, whatever. Okay, let's do the thing. I'm gonna try not to have a potty mouth. Paint skateboards. Thank you, Cinderella. Um, uh, I'm going to try not to have a potty mouth uh, this paint night. I won't, by the way. Because um, we've probably got lots of kitties trying this one out, which I'm excited for. Um, uh, thank you. Cinderella's talking about the skateboard that I just painted. You can find that on my Instagram. Tay Tay Ski. Where is it? It's everywhere. Um, uh, I think I'm going to be painting more skateboards, so that's another thing we can add in there. Thank you. Oh, my nose is itchy, you guys. Okay. Talking about colors, and it doesn't really matter if you don't have the right ones. If you want, like, a beige. I have a Titan Mars Pale. I'm always, when Cinderella's here, I remember to uh, say exactly what colors I'm using. It's just, like, a tinted beige. I don't know if you can see. Um, and I've got a light magenta, if you don't have something like that, like a light pink. And if you don't have that, red and white will make a light pink. Um, Cinderella's going to use portrait pink. Do I have that in my little bucket over here? I don't, but very close to this one. Um, I'm going to use this little tanned color. Oh my gosh. I know it is a mega cadmium day. My, uh, Allergies already off the chains. I can feel I was just painting with red over there, too Before we started, let me just scratch my nose over here oh, Okay <sighs> I hate when this happens For everyone who doesn't know that's what Cinderella brought up We found out during these paint nights in the last two years that I am allergic to cadmium whenever I use cadmium paints My nose always gets itchy and I sneeze I feel it already. Alrighty then. If you are a penciler, a pencil starter. Um, oh, wait, that's good. If you are a pencil starter, Nico's here, or if somebody just prefers using pencil to start off with, take out your pencils. If you are gonna start with paint just like me, grab a small brush. It can be a little beep pointed. It can be tiny if you want it to be. 
It can be a square, really whatever you have, no stress. The smallest brush you got. I'm gonna go with this one so you can see my lines. Always remember that I do my lines a little bit darker and a little bit more in your face so that you can see it on the camera. This is just our rough drawing, just like the pencilers. We are with paint doing a rough drawing that we're gonna be painting over top later, right? I actually might have to do pink. I'm just realizing you might not be able to see this well. That's fine. I'm gonna take my little brush, whatever you use to see my water dishes over here on the side. I'm gonna scoop a bunch of water. Oh, you guys can't even see. Can you see that right there? I'm scooping a bunch of water close to my little pile of paint, whatever color you're using, pink, temp, beige, whatever. And we're going to bring a bunch of water so that we just grab a tiny touch of paint and we mix it in. It gets into like a chocolate milky consistency is what I like to say. So it's not just pure water. There's a little bit of paint in there so it has a little bit of body substance, maybe it's a better word. Um, but see how I'm mixing it up there into this like wet pile down here. And I'm going to take a peek at my canvas and I'm going to imagine our cutie little Miss Piggy just right in there in the middle. We're going to acknowledge that her hair is probably going to come out to the edges, right? We're going to try to just picture where she's going to go. And as I say this, don't worry because I always tend to paint my stuff too big anyway, but I consciously try not to. That's important. <laughs> So we're just going to do a big old circle and this circle is going to be pretty big because her hair is going to go around it as well. So don't think that it's just her little face. It's her whole face that we're doing a circle of. So let's just go. See, I'm holding so far back on my paintbrush because I want it to be loosey goosey, right? Just getting used to the flow. I am going to draw a big old circle. Oh, see mine's dripping a little bit. That's how watery it should be. But also see how the circle's not perfect. I'm probably gonna make it a little bigger even. I'm okay if her hair goes off the edge. But see how I went around a couple times? It's like impossible to paint a circle perfect in one go. And we just roughly wanna see where our little Mish Piggy's gonna fit. And from, it, let me know if this is too hard to see. I can always do another color just so you guys can see it better, but I'll make it a little darker. We've got a circle. Right, how's that? And from there, we're gonna make some little cutie ears off the top. And we're gonna make them look a little bit bigger or a little bit longer than they look in our reference photo down here. Because again, remember, look, her hair goes over top of it a bit. So we are just gonna make that pop right out the top of her head, boop, right to the top of our canvas and bring it on down. See, look, I already drew it too big. She's going right off the canvas. And again on the side, this one goes out a little bit because her face is to the side, it's not straight. I'm gonna do another cutie little ear of hers. Boop. How is that? Oh, my, I came to the studio with my hair still drying. From a shower, it's a little crazy over there. Whoop. All right, we've got two circles. Just kidding, one big circle and two little beans at the top. And from here, we're gonna draw her arm cause she's doing her cute little look, oops, <laughs> over the shoulder. And that's inside the circle. We're just gonna draw another bean down here. This is where her arm is gonna go. How is that? And see, like we still have some circle on the outside of it, right? It's still on the inside of our big circle a bit. We've got a circle. An arm, really.
Okay. And from here, we're just gonna go down. She has a little neck. Just a line. See, again, there's more. Our circle goes out this way for her chubby little cheeks. But we're just gonna do one little line down for her neck. It's like an inch long. You can make it as long as you want. You can cover it up with hair later. And from that line, we're just gonna curve it down. Just like how there's a curve right here. We're just going to do a curve right here, but not complete the whole circle. I know in my reference photo, or not reference photo, when I did my first little sketch there, there was two sharp lines, but I freestyled a little bit. I freestyled a little bit. And from her little arm, we're going to imagine where her cute dress is going to go. Look at that, right? We've basically just mocked the same curve again. It looks like the same curve three times. Doop, doop, doop. About midway here is where I stop that line. And then let's draw a line straight down. Like we're about to draw a triangle for her cute little dress. Okay, so it's going to go straight down from that line we drew down to the oval that is her arm. And all the way over to the other side. See how we did a triangle? starting to hear I'm gonna make it a little dark over here I know it's a little bit different than our reference photo but just for easiest sense here is a triangle and then from the midway point of this triangle we're gonna make another one right see how now there's a little triangle right here even though the lights shining on it it looks like a bunch of crazy lines right now but we have a triangle right here and a triangle right here, and that's just her little dress. Like I said, I'm not gonna be drawing her hand. We're not gonna be doing a hand like this. That's just miserable for everybody. It wouldn't be fun. <laughs> it would be hard for me to do it by myself even. We're just not even gonna think about the hand. Her hand is somewhere else in our rendition of Miss Piggy. What are we thinking so far? So far, so cute. We're still using our little brush. We're still using that watered down chocolate milky consistency paint. That was a mouthful. We're trusting, says Cinderella. That's all I can ask for. So inside of our little piggy's face, we're gonna decide where her cute little cheeks are gonna go. And so remember, we acknowledge that some of her hair is gonna be puffing inside of this circle. So we're going to come a little ways down. See how my circle is really thick? Like there's already is like an inch that I drew. If your line is like a skinny line right here or a pencil line, right? Still imagine you're coming in this far away. We're coming about an inch down. And we're going to curve in to cut those big cheeks. If you can, ooh, this is going to be hard to see. This is going to be hard to see. Um, see how I'm following the circle? Then I curve out this way to make a big cheeky. Ignore that step, you guys. It's not working with this color of light. I am just going to go to her mouth instead. We can make those shapes later. Sorry about that. <laughs> Usually I don't go back on what I say, but I'm realizing that's not really working today. You can kind of see, right, how I came in a little bit smaller and puffed out her cheeks while using that basic circle. But we're going to go in there later. First, we're going to figure out how she is looking at an angle. So we've got a circle. If we we're going to cut it in the middle, we would kind of go right down where that ear is, right? But she's turned to the side a bit. See, right? This is straight up and down in our circle, but she's at the side. So we're going to draw a line down the middle that's like that on an angle. Oops. Like this. I'm drawing mine thick so you can see it, but remember it can be a tiny little skinny line. But see how it's on an angle, it's not straight up and down, on an angle. 
That's gonna help us map out her face because she's like this, right? Can you guys even hear the music that I'm playing right now? I just noticed that a song that is not copy is not uh, what you call it royalty free just came on my playlist but if you can't hear it that's fine all right we've got a crazy circle with some ears poking out and a line right through the middle so far so good that line is showing us that her eyes are going to go on either side this is a symmetrical point of what we're using but again it's not straight where it's always going to be on this angle if it helps you again too to do that angled line this way you can make a line like this too. Just to remind yourself that it's not up and down. She's looking to the side. So this square, square, it's a cross. This plus sign that we're making is really going to help us lay out where all of her features go. I love her eyelashes. I'm excited to paint those. Okay, so from that middle circle, we can start laying out those extra shapes. We know that at the very bottom she has her mouth, which is just an upside down triangle. So again, using the lines that we made, if this is the center of her face, her mouth is going to be like this, right? A triangle. I think, I don't want this to confuse you. I'm going to be going in with a different color right now. Just realizing that this is a little bit uh, too light to differentiate on... The camera, I can see it on here, but when it looks like on the screen to you guys, it's gonna blend in a little bit. So you don't have to change colors by any means. You can if you want, if you're somebody who likes to do exactly what I do, feel free to grab some light pink out. But you don't have to do this. This is just me trying to uh, make it easier for you at home to see what we're doing here. So right, we have this middle line. I'm still using chocolate milky pink. This is still just my rough draft. And I'm going to draw this triangle on that same angle. All right? Is that a little bit easier to see? I still want to follow the same angle. We've got a triangle upside down. Start up her mouth. And at the top of that triangle, we can do two little lines to show where her mouth is going to go. Again, this is, I already know, if you're already trusting, if when I asked how's this going and you said we're trusting a couple minutes ago, hold on tight. <laughs> so we've got a cute little chin. Her mouth is going to go in there. We know where those little Right, we can see those smile parts of her mouth. We're gonna come down a halfway past. If we cut this shape in half, we're coming from those smile lines down and across and up again. So this is helping us decide where her schnoz is gonna go, right? Now we can make it a circle. From that shape that we did where we found out how her snout's going to go over. Right, we made those two little dashes and from that dash we went down, over, and completed the circle. It's a little more of an oval. But we've got a snout. Give me one second while you make that shape. Just have to answer something quick. We've got her cute snout. Trunk, no, why do I want to call it a trunk? This happens every time we do an animal of some sort. I'm like, schnoz, trunk, tr, snoot, uh, pig snout. It's a snout. It's a snout. From that big oval that we made, we're going to draw two lines straight up from it. But again, we're always going on that angle. 
right? Because she's turned sideways, so this isn't straight up and down. If we made the line straight up and down, they would look like this. But no, we're following that base cross that we started with, this one here. And that's how we're following through. Okay, and on top of those two lines, see how I came right up to the center line? See how they matched up there? We're going to mock this shape that we did, this curve. We're just going to do that exact same thing, but on the top to touch those two lines together. Right, like this, and like this. Shoop. So I just watched a bunch of uh, Bob Ross videos the other day. I haven't watched one in a really long time. Um, I don't know why I just, I, was, I didn't know what I wanted to watch. I just put them on in the background. And I realized, you guys, that he doesn't really teach very technical. He kind of just does it and wants you to follow along. Am I too technical? Uh, yeah, because I noticed too, he, does, he knocks around. He's there like 20 minutes, man. He's a pro. He's a pro. But he would just be like, I'm doing a tree. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and I always feel like I have to tell all the steps. I think it's important. Just wiping away here. Okay. Now for her eyeballs. At first I thought that they were more bean-like angles, but they're actually stir they're pretty good circles to start with. So we don't really have to worry about angles. We're just going to pop two circles in, these two squares that we left ourselves. She looks hilarious right now. Um, but okay, <laughs> zoned out there for a second. Let's do those two circles again. Remember, this is just our rough draft. You can go around as many times as you want to make the perfect circle. That might be a little big. Those might be a little big. Let's see. Let's go like this size. Eh, I made them the same anyway. She's like this. See my paint's super watery, that's why it's dripping. I love the drips. When I'm painting it myself, I would let all those drips just keep on dripping. The reason I wipe them off is just so that you guys don't get too confused. You look back and be like, do I have to draw that line? So embrace the drip if you want. Now we've got these crazy eyeballs. <laughs> okay, when I'm looking back and forth the two, they're literally like ready to go. <laughs> you might not believe me but she's like done already <laughs> we can go ahead and, and just do a smaller shape inside of those ear shapes if you want you can do that again later it doesn't really matter but most of our piggy is mapped out before we start coloring her in, I think our best bet is to map out some of her hair a little bit too. So at this point, maybe you should take out a different color. Maybe you should take out a little, if you're using pink, a bait. Joe Kaiser! Hey, last Thursday of every month. Don't you worry. So I'm not technically gone, I'm just, not here as much, you know. Hey, but you always find me on these days. You always find us. Um, uh, when it comes to Miss Piggy's hair, we should maybe grab a different color to map it out. Ooh, the hair is going to be interesting of how we should do it. I'm going to take out a little bit of yellow or like a Naples yellow hue. If you want to see here, it can be yellow with a bunch of white in it. It can be beige if you want. We are just going to quickly map out the shapes of where her hair is going to go. Again, remember, we're going simplest. We start with the simplest shape. We break it down. 
and we add detail as we go and it always surprises us how it comes together. So we're going to grab a little bit of that yellow and guess what? We're doing the same old thing. We're just chocolate milkifying it by adding a bunch of water, scoop, scooping it right by our paint, grabbing a little touch of that paint, way more water than paint. And we're going to decide where her hair goes. So remember, always look at your reference photo to kind because of, that's what I'm, where's my hand? At your reference photo, because that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm figuring out where everything goes. And the more you do paint eyes with me, and the more you kind of see how I decide to lay stuff down, it helps you be able to paint and draw on your own too. Okay. So let's see, let's start with where her part is in the hair. It's not right in the middle of her eyes. It's a little bit touch over if we're looking at our reference photo. So with this yellow color, we're just going to make a line where we want her hair part to go. Right, it goes a little bit over her head. Remember we made her ears a little bit longer than they should be because hair goes over top of them. And we just make a line straight across. Doesn't You can curve it if you want. If you're somebody comfortable with curving it right away, you can. If you're somebody who prefers breaking it down into geometric sharp shapes first, you just go boop, boop. Look at this creature we've created so far. So funny. And from that part, it comes across her hair a little bit. I mean, her forehead a little bit. Right? And remember, your line might be just this thin. Mm, can I zoom in here? Where is my... Right, like so you're, if you're drawing in pencil, your pencil line is like tiny, tiny, thin right here, right? But my line was huge because I painted it. But you're going to still want to come down at least an inch, right, from your line if it's just a tiny line. Right? And we'll make a line where it goes over top the ear. These are all drippies too. And they can match up at the end. Just a rectangle. Don't think about painting hair. We're just boxing out all the shapes. And it comes beside her face. We're going into the circle a little bit. And another kind of rectangle. Maybe. Are you trusting me? <laughs> And we know that there's a cute curl that comes over top of the cheek a little bit. doesn't go too much further over the eye. So instead of making a line, we are going to make a curve just right here to show that cute curl going over top her cheek. And it can match up. I'm going to make the hair go right off the edge. Let's see. It's basically a circle. Let's just make a circle right there. Right? It's cutting over the cheek a little bit. Again, tell me if the lines are too light. Yours should be at home. It's okay if yours are so light you can only just see them a little bit. I just want you to be able to see mine, so I'm darkening them up a bit. And the hair just continues on down with another circle at the end of a curl. Oh. And another circle. Let's just do three. Boom, boom, boom. To finish her hair on the side. And see those curls, like once we get into more detail, right? You're just going to follow that shape. And look, we can have like a, one single hair coming off there. Make it look more hair-like, not blobby shape like it's going to be at the start. We're going to do some nice wispy white lines in there to make her look all curly. But see how we've laid out where that hair is going to go. Okay. Still using that chocolate milk consistency or a pencil. And from that part, 
Same on this side. It just goes over the ear a little bit. And about an inch into the face. And we come on down. On a Saturday night? What are you talking about? It's a Thursday night. You just had me thinking that I was wilding out, Tender Bear. Hello. Good to see ya in the studs. You did get me. I'm sure if you rewinded back, you'd see a terror in my eye for a momento. I'm, uh, how are you? Good to see ya. JK, I look at my calendar wrong. Yeah. Hey, it's Thursday. If I'm here, it's Thursday. This week, this summer, this year, who am I kidding? Like, every weekend has been weddings for me. Sometimes two weddings back to back. In wedding madness. So it couldn't be a Saturday. It couldn't be a Saturday. So we're just still mapping out our Miss Piggy's hair. Again, look, there's another curl that kind of goes over the eye. Almost. Maybe not quite. I probably went over the eye a little too much. But there's a curl there. So we're just going to do a nice little circle. And bring it on down for a bigger circle. Again, see, look, I'm going over that original circle that we did of her big face. You can have a little curly Sue out there if you want. We've got another circle. And another one that's just kind of a big old one that fills out the bottom. So now I'm going to complete the circle. I'm just going to do a curve from that arm that we made. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm looking back and forth at both of them. I think we are probably set to start coloring some stuff in. Are we ready, folks? 7.42, we're doing okay for time. We've got a Miss Piggy in the works, whether you like it or not. Okay. When you see my eyes go, tick, 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 that's what I'm doing. Looking at my picture, looking at her, looking at my picture. So one thing that's going to feel a little weird looking at the picture, what I'm telling you to do versus what we're seeing, I'm going to tell us to paint the hair in yellow first. I know that her hair is more white, and we are going to go in with a bunch of white over top. But the shadows and the stuff inside of the hair are like mixed like nicely, like they're like greeny grays, like they're colors that are like difficult to mix to look nice. So we're just gonna do yellow blonde like a Barbie instead, um, just so that we're not frustrated and annoyed. This artist did a great job, beautifully done. But for the sakes of us who aren't artists painting along, we're not gonna worry about mixing the perfect shadow tones um we are just gonna color in what we just did yellow oh we got justin in the chat coming in with the fire fire hello don't apologize for being late you've been putting in enough work <laughs> are you tired of my face yet <laughs> everybody who's ready with pencils put your pencils away we're done with pencils for now we're gonna grab your biggest paintbrush you got maybe just kidding I'm not gonna be so bold to say the biggest one you got depending on the size of canvas that you're using like see I'm gonna we're filling in these shapes so see the size of my brush that's a good size you gonna get you want to get a bigger brush than what you've been using for these outlines so now we're going into our yellow with not as much water. We want thick yellow in there. Remember, it's yellow or it's Naples hue. I think I was using Naples yellow hue. I need a little more on there. Okay. With a little bit of water on my brush so it pulls across well, I am just gonna fill in those shapes that we did with yellow. If there's somebody out there who wants it to be perfect, you can mix a brown color if you want. We're maybe just making a Barbie Miss Piggy and I'm here for it. There ain't no rules. 
Again, see, I'm just going into those shapes and I'm filling in pretty roughly. Like, I'm not really worried too much about it looking smooth or whatever. We're going to be going over with white a million times to get all those little hair brush strokes in there. This is just our base coat because we can't just paint white on a white canvas. You wouldn't be able to see the hairs that we're going to be painting. So that's why we put a darker color at the bottom. Doo -doo -doo. And again, since I love a good drip, I'm just going to add a little bit more water to my brush here and just let it drip down the side. Because I'm a sucker for a drip. And you see I just dip my brush. I just dipped my brush into my water a little bit more. And again, right now it's going to look messy and crazy, but we're just laying out our basics for our shapes to go in with more detail later and pump it on up. Again, the more comfortable you get with breaking stuff down into shape, you don't have to do it so... What's the word? Literally. So literally... Like once you get more comfortable and you start seeing in shape a little bit more, then you can kind of start doing your shapes a little more detailed. But when you're learning, it's always nice to start out and get used to breaking stuff down to its simplest form. Again, I'm going to add a little more drippies here too. So I just added some more water to my brush and I'm just going to push it in there and let her drip. You've never broken down hair, but you love this. Hey, everything, literally everything is easier to break down. And then you build up more color, right? Then we're gonna like squint down and be like, okay, where are the mid-tones? We're gonna go in with a little bit of that lighter yellow and then finish it with like white st strokes on top of the hair, right? Are we kind of seeing it better a little bit now if you squint and you trust me? Okay. Okay, we've got her yellow hair laid out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to color in our piggy's face. We're going to use a medium sized brush. Again, depending on what size, like maybe this is okay to fill in those shapes. Maybe you need something a little bit smaller. Again, you don't want it to be teeny, teeny, tiny because then you're just like doing too much work to fill in a spot. You want it a little bit bigger. And okay, if you were using beige like I was using that first color, that tan, I don't know what the right word is for it, which basically is red and white with lots and lots and lots of white. We're gonna mix in either a little bit of pink or a little bit of red if you don't have pink. So we want the original color that we did our good old outline with. And then I'm taking the pink that I did the secondary outline that some of you might not have done, but if you now would like to add some of the pink, if you just wanna darken up the color a little tiny bit. We're using a big brush and we're using thick paint. We don't want that chocolate milk consistency. We want more paint than water because we want it to go on thick. And we're just going to start by coloring in her cheeks. See around her cheeks here. I'm going in with this pinky peach. <laughs> right, and see how I'm still kind of like choosing my brush strokes carefully. Like I'm curving, like I'm imagining I'm curving around this shape like her cheeks would be, right? So I'm not going up and down side to side. I'm Curving up and down as I go in a little bit of an angle there and under her lip too. All right? Just to get that rosy cheek in there a little bit. And then we're going to wash our brush off. I'm just roughly wiping my brush off on my paper towel or rag or whatever you got. And then I'm gonna go just right into the original color we're using that beige, not the pink and beige, just with the beige, adding a little touch of water on my brush. And now I'm gonna go around and fill in the rest. And I'm going to touch and kind of blend in with that pink that we already put down. 
Again, your yellow might be a little wet, so you might want to stay a little far away from it. You don't want to get too close because you will get yellow blended in there. But see, it's very subtle, right? Like, see how this is just the tan, this is the pink tan. You just want that subtle change. And around her eyeballs. Again, if you want to shrink them a little bit, if you think you may have the eyes too big, it happens all the time. And paint over top that circle a little bit. If you're having trouble pulling your paintbrush across the canvas, add a little bit more water to your brush. Again, we don't want it to be that super watered down, but a little bit of water does help it move. If there's no water at all, it's dry brushing, and there's a very specific time and place for dry brushing. And same down here, just fill in that space. See that I haven't painted on her snout and I haven't painted the line right here, this little rectangle either. And again, it's still pretty flat. We're not gonna get as detailed as uh, Mr. Webb did here in his picture, no need for that. We're just painting a bare bones Miss Piggy. He's got like the perfect hair shadows and that's okay. We're not going to worry about that. But we are just making sure that we are filling in most of the shapes. And her chest, not in those triangles that we made, but around it we kind of lost track of our dress band right here because we're using the same color but we can draw that back in remember this bottom triangles we made were her dress that we're not going to worry about And again, this is rough and loosey-goosey. We're always simplified. And I'm filling in that bean of an arm. Okay. Now we'll go back into that pink tan that we had. I know it's kind of annoying of me. I probably should have asked you guys to do this in the first place. We do need to paint in this snout as well. I just didn't want us to lose it and all the other stuff. But it should be a little bit on the darker side. But we are filling in that snout circle rectangle. And see, we should be able to see some of these shapes that we've already laid down. It's okay if it doesn't. We can always repaint over top of it, but we should be able to see a little bit of that in there. And hey, while I got you with that pink tan on your brush, you might as well come down to our bean that we drew. That was her arm. And where that line is, right, imagine that we're drawing the outline of the bean, but we're just going halfway up and down right here. Just a darker pink line right there because that implies her armpit. Her cutie little armpit. Sorry, it's so washed out on the screen. Holy moly. I swear she's got much more life to her when I look at her here. <laughs> Okay, and now we got to get a little bit of white on our palettes. For y'all who've been here before, you know that we're just working dark to light, which isn't a cardinal sin rule. What am I trying to think? We can break that every once in a while. It doesn't mean it's the be all and all the only way, but that's the basic. We usually try to go dark to light. And we are going to, I'm still using the same brush medium sized brush but we are going to take a bunch of white a 
big blob of white and a little bit of our original base color the color whatever you use to start with your outline whatever color you're using to color her in mostly so for me it's that tanny beige color but I want it to be nice and light because now we're just painting on some quick highlights yo 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 BRC hello how's it going see how I've made this lighter tan beige we're gonna go right into that little rectangle above her nose and just color it in with this color lighter all right coming up you can make it a little bit longer if you want and depending on this it just looks white on the screen oh I swear it's not depending on the size of your brush you might want to get a smaller one but you are going to bring that light color down and around that snout that we made we're ref we're kind of outline highlighting it here Remember that Miss Piggy is a puppet, right? She, we're not doing like a pig texture. We're literally doing like a texture, a puppet, puppet textured material. So the shapes are sharper than it would be if it was a natural pig. Do you sell these as BRC? So these ones I don't, whenever I finish these paint night ones, um, I donate them to a shop here in town. It's like a pay what you can shop so people can uh, buy them or get them but I do I am a full-time artist so I do sell paintings just not the ones we do on paint nights you can find all my paintings and where's Tay Tay Ski up here um, on Instagram and Etsy and all that jazz but um, yeah these ones I don't sell I like to donate them okay we're see how we did that little highlight right we went around the nose and we went around the edge here to show where the snout is you can even bring that line up a little bit more we're gonna do a little bit of a highlight line on this cheek oh now i'm choppy i see it i see it i see it Wow, what happened? Oh my god. Okay. Holy moly. I tried to go on a different internet. Then my OBS crashed. Then the recording stopped. I don't know if I'm going to be able to connect it together. We're just going to go with the... F Sloan Martins, hello. We just missed some madness. Holy moly. Well, we're just going to hope for the best, and you've been here the whole time. Okay, 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 good, okay, good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. What were we doing? We were adding, it's been fantastic, 10 out of 10. Okay, amazing. I'm going to have to figure out how to connect those two together to upload on YouTube later but we'll figure that out we can cut out some of that madness okay we had a lighter color on our brushes <laughs> right we had that whatever our base color was adding light white to it to get it nice and light we outlined that nose hello B hello BRC I saw you talking about my Batman I don't know if you heard me respond <laughs> but um the original is available. Prints are available. Taytasky.com. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I was like, right when I saw you commented, I was like, I'm frozen, but it's available. <laughs> Taytasky.com. There's a little Taytasky up here. You can find it on there. Okay, we're back, folks. We've got the... Hey, I love to hear that. I'm glad you love it. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm using my smaller brush. I'm using more paint than water, but a little bit of water on my brush. I went around the outline of that little nose. Hey, the Calgary one's still available too. I wish my camera was here. I could just turn around so you could see. It's just on the other side of this wall. Thanks for liking my stuff. You're the best. 
All right, I'm going down with this light color. I'm going right down that triangle we made for her mouth, right? Remember the bottom was just an upside down triangle. Just an outline on the left hand side. There's a little line on her cheek too, right here. Beautiful. And a little bit inside of her ear, right there. You can color actually the whole ear in if you want to. I think BRC means the world. Means the world. I'm sitting on a few paintings, so I'm glad that you like a couple of them. Okay. Let's go on to adding a little bit of highlight on her little armies because we've got this light tan color. And the thing about her arm is we just did a basic shape, but it actually has a little more form to it. She's actually got a shoulder in there. So if we imagine that the top is her shoulder and it's going to come inside, we're going to do a little light line. See how it's not right at the edge. But it's about an inch way in. We're going to be shaping out that cute arm later. Let's see how we're adding. It looks just white. I swear it's not on my actual palette canvas. Thanks for the rainbow, Justin. And the fireworks, BRC. Angels. Sweet angels. Spoiling me while my stream crashes and burns to the ground <laughs> that hasn't happened in like a year that brings me back to like when i first started streaming two almost three years ago and technology was just not my friend and everything was going wrong always do you guys remember that some of you were around for that some of you were around for that the internet was not my friends it was not internet and technology just both failed we can even do another little light line on her cheek here but we see it all coming together. Do, do, do. Okay. How is that? Now we're going to paint her dress real quick, like. And that is so up to you, like what color you want to do it. It can be pink, it can be purple, it can be pink and purple. I'm going to do it pyro crimson which is like a purpley red a little bit. And I am going to take a little bit of purple out onto my palette too. Is my light purple in here? Of course not. And a little bit of medium violet I'm going to bring onto my page palette. I can't speak today or any day. Now with a medium sized brush, it can be a square, it can be a rounded square, it can be a circle, whatever works. We're going to go in and paint that cute little dress of hers. I'm going to mix my purple and red a little bit together. And I want a little bit of water on my brush, but not too much. And if we can remember where that band of her dress went, right? We had a little line here. Ooh, it looks like a very ugly color on the camera. I swear it's pretty, Miss Piggy. So right, see how it goes at the angle down a little bit. Remember we had an angle here and we had an angle here. And you can make it smaller at the top and it gets thicker at the bottom of the curve. And that joins up to her little dress, right? We had the triangle that we drew down here. Ooh, I don't want to make her too low cut. <laughs> From this line, I'm going to, my original triangle was right here. I'm going to bring this line up a little bit past our band over the skin we've already painted. See what I did there? A little bit different. Let me know if you want me to zoom in on this side. And with that wet paint on there, I'm just going to go a little bit into, this is completely optional. This is just decorative detail as we go. I'm just going to go right into my white, into this wet paint, and just kind of dab a little bit of light. Ooh, it's 
I feel like I have to do something if it's not showing up well on the camera. That just looks ugly. Maybe pink. I'm just gonna go in with some pink. It's still not doing it. I'm just dabbing a lighter color onto the wet paint of the dress that we already did just to give that dress some texture and some pattern, but you don't have to do it. I'm like regretting my choice as we go. <laughs> the colors just aren't showing up as well. But you can just easily fill in the dress if you want with a solid shape, right? Let's just say I'm going in with this red and I'm filling in that triangle with just the red. I'm a drippy girl, so I'm gonna let the paint drip at the bottom. Some of you might wanna bring the painting all the way to the bottom. We're going up to that curve that we had on the other side. And again, you can go in with those lighter colors to have some of that texture. Her dress looks like it's almost like, I don't know what the word, I'm so bad at terms for dress stuff, I realize as I'm supposed to be planning a wedding. I'm not planning a wedding. Um, there's so like tulle, satin, velvet, I don't know. But she does have a texture dress on. Again, it can be solid if you want, or you can add in some fun texture by just dabbing in a lighter color into your wet paint that you already have on there. I swear it's not gray like it's coming up on the camera. But I'm just dab, dab, dabbing some chunks of paint into already wet paint to get a little textured mm, texture. <laughs> to create a bit of texture. Right? And remember, what's different than our reference photo to what we're doing is that we just drew her dress coming up the other side. We're not drawing her hand because that's hard. We don't have enough time today to learn how to paint hands. And we're just gonna bring that red line a little bit up like that curve that we did originally. How's that? If you feel like you wanna bring this up a little bit more, you can. Remember, nothing's permanent. The rough draft was just to help us start laying stuff out. And as we go through, if you feel like the line you did originally you don't like, you can cover over it. You can go outside of it. We can cover it up, whatever. My colors aren't nice. But let's make some drippies out the bottom. Remember that's just by going right into my water dish, mixing it into the paint a bit and just like pushing it on where you want some drips to go just with that extra water. Remember, they're gonna dry a lot lighter because there's lots of water in there and water makes paint dry very translucent. But here we've got a little dress, Sipu. Another thing that's super cute about this Miss Piggy is that she has gloves on. And like I said, I know that we're not drawing her hand over here but we're implying the end of her glove on the other side because she has high rise gloves. I don't think that's the right word, but for that, I'm gonna use purple with a little bit of white in it to lighten it up a bit. But I'm gonna make her, just like in the picture, I'm gonna make her sleeves purple. And the beauty of painting and the amount of detail that you wanna do is that we hardly have to do anything here because the arm cuts off, but we're gonna imply that there is a cute little glove on. So see, I'm just gonna go right across. And it's not a line straight across. It's kind of like a curve, like we're picturing the top of our shoulder that we did up there, right? We've curved it up. And then you can just draw straight down from that, down in the direction of her arm. Right? And while it's still wet, so we don't have to do too much detail to it because it is just an afterthought. We don't want too much focus. We're gonna go right into white with our brush and right in that wet paint, we're gonna blend in a little bit of white to show the top part of the, um, what am I saying? The top part of this uh, <laughs> glove. Guys, ADD is crazy. <laughs> How your brain can just 
forget a word that you just said. Um, and then even on this side too, we're just gonna pull down a little bit of white. See that since I'm working inside of an already wet paint square, it's blending in. It's not going pure white on top, it's blending in with that purple underneath. So that's good enough for now, just roughly mapping out where that little sleeve would go. Okay. And with this purple on our brush, her eyeshadow is actually purple. So we are going to map out where her eyeshadow is going to go with whatever brush feels right for you. I'm still using a medium sized brush. I'm using a square because I love them, but I know not everybody loves the squares. Okay, and we're going to go on top of that eye. And remember, I've taught this trick a few times before, but if you haven't been here before, we'll go over it again right here. So, again, don't forget that she's still on an angle. We always want to imagine her on an angle. We don't want it straight across because that doesn't make sense with how we've laid everything else out. So, am I right? But we are going to picture if you cut a circle in half, when you draw above the circle, it should mock the top shape of the circle. So right, the curves upwards. If you draw on the bottom of the circle, you need to mock the bottom shape, the bottom curve that curves down, if that makes sense. So for us to get these little eye shadows in, I made her eyes pretty far apart, so I'm gonna go over a little bit more, but we're gonna follow the curve of the top part of her eye, right? How it's curved up, not down. And the same with this line. I'll use a smaller brush to make it a little bit easier. And the same thing, because we're still above the eye, but remember, it's not directly across. We're still on this angle. So I'm gonna draw a line eep, curved up and down. Right, it's, cur it's not a straight line, because a straight line would look like this. Right, we are curving like we're copying the top of the circle and we're coming on down. And you can match that together. And again, she has ginormous eyelashes, so we are gonna be covering up a lot of this. Don't stress if it's a little messy, but check that eyelid. See what I mean by it's not a straight line across, it's curved in the same direction of the top of the circle that we already drew to map out. Because remember, we're going very simple. Everything's simplified and easier. That's why we start with the big circle for her eyeballs. Even though her eyeballs are a bunch of different shapes, the big circle really helps us lay it all out. Same thing on this side. If it helps, you can put like a point of where you want the first one to start and the next one to end. And we go right and then you follow the top of the circle that you already drew if you can see it right Again, like I said, I think I made her eyes a little far apart, but we're going to figure it out together. Okay, we've got two eyeballs started with well, eyelids, eyeshadow, whatever you want. And so that you guys aren't stressed and it feels like we actually have a Miss Piggy in the works, we're going to keep going on her eyes. <laughs> so you're not like, what is this abomination that we are creating? Okay. No worries there. We're going to get a little bit of black out onto our palettes. So remember, you don't need a lot of black. This is type... Uh... Yep, that's what we're doing. This is... <laughs> you can use a Sharpie if you prefer to do smaller outlines of black. I'm just using a tiny bit. You don't need lots. Black goes a long way. But we are going to get to the smallest brush we got. Something nice and small. Got to have a tiny, tiny. Even if your smallest one is like this, that's okay. But pointed will help you out a little bit more. 
whenever we're doing type of outliney things. Remember, we're doing a cartoon, so outlines are fine. Don't stress. But we want a little bit of water on our brush, a little bit more than we usually do when we're slobbing colors around, because we want it to pull nicely. But we don't want it to be that chocolate milk consistency because that will dry too lightly. Okay, so first let's just do a little mouth while those eyelids of ours dry. So again, remember we're still on an angle. Never forget that original T that we drew across. The first thing we're going to do is draw a line right underneath that schnoz. And it's just a line. Again, I always laugh if like real art teachers are like... <laughs> People go through my pay night sometimes, like, you guys gotta jump through the ADHD train with me. <laughs> I'm just teaching you how I paint. Some people will probably focus on one thing at a time, and I bring you along for the ride everywhere. Sorry, not sorry, but also sorry. <laughs> okay, right, we did that line right across, and again, I know I keep saying it, but it's really gonna help to remember that it's, oops, I did, got a little black in her hair, that's okay. And it's always on an angle. It's not straight across. It's on that angle. And now her mouth is just a smaller triangle of that already triangle that we did. Right? So we're just bringing it down and up again. Like show. We can put a little tongue in there if you want. We don't have to. But it's literally just a black triangle. And if you can still see your little smile lines that we did, remember we did some smile lines. If you can't see them, that's totally okay. But remember, they're just a little bit, a little under halfway of your cute little schnoz. The schnoz that we've already drawn, right? How's that? Cute schnoz. And we're still using a little brush. My lips are real chapped. <laughs> um, we're still using a little brush and we're gonna go on up to those eyeballs. Up to those eyeballs. And we're going to start by making that eyeliner line right on across. When you're doing these outlines, like I said, you can be doing it in a Sharpie. You can be doing it with a little brush like me. Some people have paint markers. But always try to support your arm. Like my arm could be on the table. Something to support more of the pressure. Because you don't want to push too hard just lightly across same on this side just swoop. Swoop. okay and from there, should we do the eyelashes? We'll do the eyelashes last. We are going to do, we're going to make the circle where the blue is gonna go on the inside. And the reason we're gonna do the black first is because we can use our blue to thin the outline later if you need. So we're picturing where that eyeball is right in the middle. We're not doing just her pupil, we're doing the full eyeball. If you wanna do it with pencil first, feel free. I can't breathe when I do stuff like that. But we've got a big old eyeball, right? Already she looks more like Miss Piggy with just those two things alone, hey? And same on this side. Really, if you look at our picture, like her eyes are pretty like crazy. She's a little wild eyed already. So don't worry about it being perfect. She's always got the like flirty half eye on anyway. 
remember since how I say that nothing's permanent, right? Like maybe I'm gonna bring her eyeball out a little bit more than what I originally drew. Like maybe I'm gonna bring it out a little bit more this way and later I'm gonna go in with some bold white paint to make that happen. Let's see how I'm just outlining the bottom of the circle, but fixing what I think. You can see, maybe if I bring it a little bit closer, can you see that, like, see my original eye circle was a little bit more in, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe I wanna make it a little bit bigger because big eyes are cute. Same with this side. Maybe I actually wanna bring it out a little bit more here. And realistically, like, this is eyeliner. Like, I don't think all the Muppets have this dark of an outline around their eyes. Like, I'm pretty sure this is her eyeliner, so. It can be smudgy. It can be thick. That's cool. And let's put a little circle on the inside of that. We always know that that white highlight at the end will be perfecto, but we don't have to do that now. It's easier to just draw a little circle that touches the eyeliner top line. It's not in the middle, it's touching the top. Well, it's in the, oh gosh. It's in the middle. Just mess that up there, I'm gonna fix that pupil. It's in the middle, but it is touching the eyelid. It's overlapping the eyelid. <laughs> Look at that crazy. <laughs> Let's see if I can wipe that off quick. see here just a little quick mess up just we're gonna be coloring that in blue anyway <laughs> she's just gonna have a hazy eye for a second please don't mind that. <laughs> okay she looks like she's tired that's my kid friendly version of what she looks like at the moment okie dokie While we wait for that to dry, it's time for us to go back into our hair and start building up some of those shapes. So like I said, right, we always go from simplest to more extreme. So if we think about this yellow being our darkest color, now we're just going to want to add a little bit of white to that yellow to have a little bit of a lighter color before we go in with pure white to add in that fluffy, curly, brush stroked hair. <laughs> Look at her. I made her eyes pretty far apart. I apologize in advance. Her eyes are a bit farther. We're going to make some magic to make them look closer, but I will admit that they are far apart. Okay, we're going to get a medium sized brush out. We're gonna take a little bit of our yellow and a little bit of our white just to make a lighter color than what we have placed down already in her hair, right? Sorry for that middle madness of having to restart. It's gonna a little more behind than I would like to be, but that's okay. I've got a little bit lighter of a yellow. Again, it's not gonna be super drastic, just a subtle bit lighter. And squinting at our little girl. <laughs> Squinting our little girl, little Miss Piggy. Where are those a little bit lighter spots? They're a little bit here, a little bit at the crease of her hair. Again, don't cover all your work. You always wanna see stuff we've done before, but we are just going in to add a little bit more dimension in her hair before we go in with that pure white. And since we're doing some uh, black outline, we're probably gonna have to add a little bit of black into her hair too, but that's okay. But I'm always being conscious of my brush strokes too when we're doing these hairs, right? We're gonna go in those curl directions. You can even bring it on over her face a little bit, right? We've got a little more detail in those curls. Can you see them coming a little bit better? A little on the side. Always going in that curly 
direction that we've already established with those circles. And another. You can see already her hair is becoming a little bit more than just flat, boring. It's coming a little bit more texture in there. A little more body oddy oddy. We all know Miss Piggy lives for the hair. <clears throat> I remember just what we drew originally <clears throat> was just our rough draft. You can go outside the lines, you can go through. I honestly just feel like I swallowed a bug, <laughs> but that's not it. <clears throat> um, I don't remember what I'm saying, so we're just gonna continue on as I cry. <laughs> um, uh, hair. That's what I was saying. Oh, no. Things are going awry. I just put black in her hair. Can you see that little black line? That's okay. Okay. While that dries in the hair, I'm bringing you all around. We are just going to bump up some of the red spots in her face. So like some of her like peachy blush colors. Because I'm seeing that they didn't show up bright enough. So we are going to get again that base color we started with. Remember mine was tra Titan Mars Pale, Beige Tan, whatever, pink, whatever you're using. Hmm, I don't know why that color didn't work the way that I wanted it to. But I'm taking out that original color and I'm taking out a tiny bit of red. You don't want it to be too much because the red is going to overpower everything. But we want most of our base color and a tiny touch of the red. It can be the red you use in the dress. It can be a different red. It can be a straight up pink that you have. Oh my goodness, this color isn't mixing well. The red that I'm using is not the right red. I'm gonna put some cadmium red just to get that allergy going. So again, I'm going into my regular color that I started Miss Piggy with, a touch of red and even a touch of a little pink if you're doing both. And we kind of want this a little more watered down than usual because we kind of do want to go on translucent. Like imagine that we're applying blush onto her at the moment. So we want a little bit of water using a medium sized brush or whatever feels appropriate for the size of painting that you're doing. And I'm gonna go in this one spot above her mouth smile crease and see how I'm building up a little bit of that blush, still being conscious of my brush strokes. So I'm like curving it with the circle. You can even wipe off a little excess if you want to just blend her in. See how it's getting nice and pinky. Same on this part of her snout. We're gonna add a little bit of the shadow, just adding some more depth and dimension. Again, remember, pretty watered down. You can even wipe off on your brush because it's just softly brushed on there. You can even kind of clean up your brush completely and go back to that edge and like literally fan it out to make it smooth if you want. Does that make sense? But the water in there is going to help you pull it around. We're also going right under her mouth on her little triangle chin that we made. Brushing a little bit. See how it's subtle though? It's not like too crazy of a difference. Pretty subtle. Same on this cheeky. Tick, tick, tick. All right. And again, wipe off if you want to like brush and fluff those lines. We've got a rosy cheeked cutie and under her chin too we have to acknowledge that shadow 
we are obviously going to be going in with black outlines more so and a little bit in that cutie little armpit that we acknowledged earlier right and with that same pink color which is pink with I mean red and the original color we were using before we're gonna also make her little nostrils that's the word I'm thinking of and again easy peasy just a little bean and just a little bean try to remember where your middle line was I didn't right two little nose holes cadmium just got me itching and also with a little bit of this darker peachy color you can also kind of darken up that one spot in her ear some more if you'd like to This Miss Ra it's she looks like Roger Ra uh, not Roger Rabbit. You guys, what's Roger Rabbit's wife's name? Why is it stumping me right now? Roger Rabbit's wife's name is it's gonna come to me at some point. Jessica Rabbit. The doy. Thank you, Cinderella. Oh no, my uh, comments weren't loading. I hope I didn't miss any comments earlier. Sorry if anyone was talking and I missed ya. Okay, I am just because I made, I made a mistake, not you guys earlier. I am just going to white fix in those spots sorry if I'm just every paint now you guys I'm just wild in every time I apologize in advance with pure white I'm just gonna go in that eyeball spot where I went over right now and like in this eyeball that I just messed up I'm just gonna go in with pure white now Again, this is a step that not everyone's going to have to do if you didn't make your eye bigger or if you didn't mess up. You can skip this step altogether, but I'm just going in to lighten up those areas. Right, a little bit more. But we are going to need white on our palettes. We are about to be adding in her beautiful white streakies in her hair. I know she does not look finished, but we're closer than it looks like she is. <laughs> okay. So before we do her hair, actually, we're going to do the quick outlines first because the hair will go over top the outlines to make it look more smooth. You're going to be taking a small brush, whatever you like to outline with. Again, here's my little baby at the moment. And we're going to go into our black. Remember, you can dip your brush in your water a couple times and sh swizzle, <laughs> whatever that is, your brush in the paint so you get every bristle filled. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of lay out where these types of hairs are going to go or around, around her face edge, like the, what is this, basically like hairline, so that we can differentiate from her face to the hair and when we do those swipes of hair after they'll go over these outlines and it'll feel a little bit more natural so we're going to start by what's easiest we're going to start by under her cutie little chin that we did here so we're going to go about halfway and we're just going to outline underneath that chin that we've already drawn more than once right we've drawn it a few times we know what's up 
just a little outline. And from that chin, we've got her cute chubby cheeks. So see how the outline goes over? We're passing and we're coming back down. We're not, maybe I'll zoom in. Right, we're not going from this line. We're going here to draw the curve. We're following the curve of that circle. Right. The curve up and the hair is gonna go over top of it, but we're starting that cute chubby cheek of hers. And from there, we are going to go through her shoulder. So remember we had a bean down here. Remember that I said that we're going to shape it into something else. So we're going to follow that outline, see how her cheeks gone up. Now we're going to come down and follow the bean. Follow the bean, but then we're going to come inside. We're making that bean skinnier because remember we drew this white line that was in a little bit. So we've got that circle bean and then we go straight down. Right? A cute little arm inside this little swoop. implied glove. That you can't see what I'm doing on it. Oops. And again, it's okay if you have a little bit of her body here. Like, we're going to be doing hair strokes over top of that, so that's okay. And same with her little armpit. Inside of those red lines that we've already made, we're going to bring it down a bit. We want those red lines we do to be higher. We're bringing her little armpit a little bit lower. See what I'm doing? Again, some people might be wanting to do this in Sharpie. Some people might not want to do this at all because they hate outline. That's okay, too. I know some people hate outlines. That's okay. If it stresses you out, that's fine. I can't live without them personally. So that's how I draw everything. But see already now how it's kind of a little bit more of a shaped arm. It's not such a blob down there. We are going to come on up to her other cheek, which is the same thing, right? Like this line comes up, but we want to follow her big old cutie cheek that we've outlined there before. And I think I made my chin, my neck a little bit too far in, but that's okay. I'm popping it out a little bit more. And outline there. It looks like she's taking a selfie. That's what I'm picturing this arm here is doing. Right? Little Miss Pigs. Okay, she has a pearl necklace there that we'll do later. I guess we can outline the dress if you want. Someone outside listening to crazy loud music. I don't know if you guys can hear. I'm pretty sure Miss Piggy has a bigger chest than what I've depicted here, but what can you do? You can add detail on the dress if you want. Make a line there. But we've got that ready. And now we're going to go up around her face line just so that we... Where's my zoomy? start brushing in those hairs and I think we're gonna do the eyelashes last I'm just gonna keep you on your toes the whole time because the eyelashes are also gonna bring her together <laughs> I'm still using this small brush I'm just going across that hairline and making a thin line as to where I think her hair is gonna go and again we're going back over this with white so don't feel too stressed we're not really doing an exact outline but we're gonna map out where we want some of those fluffy hairs. See how I'm already doing a couple lines? That was kind of by accident, but it doesn't hurt because it is hair. Right? We're going to apply a lot of shadow down here. So in between these 
his her cheek and her shoulder we are just gonna fill in that space with dark brush strokes see what I'm doing there it's still regular like we're outlining but I'm just filling out this one space We'll be doing her curly hairs over top of it, but for now we're filling it up with black. Same with her little shoulder, same thing. Oops. Oh no. Good thing you didn't see that. I almost messed it up there. You can make that outline thicker if you want, but we're also gonna have one big curl just like the circles we drew there's a curl here a big old curl right there where we whoops so I'll get out of here and we're going over top of this hair here right she goes over top of the ear I'm making a very messy outline but I think it's okay <laughs> doesn't really matter but I'm just roughly loosely going across don't want to treat it too precious because it is hair. Hair is flailing everywhere. You can even make this a full loop-de-doop -loop if you want. And on this side, from that part that we made, we know it goes behind the first ear. And on top of the first ear. Adding more water to your brush will help it pull across a little bit easier. And we know that there's a big old curl at the bottom of this one that we've already kind of mapped out, but we're laying it on there. Again, see how loosey-goosey my outlines are. But we know that her bangs go like this. Again, we're happy that's yellow in there. This is her hairline. That's okay. Same thing though. We're going to darken that line right there. And the big old curl that we put over crosses her face. And down on the side, it looks like there's a cute little curl right here if you want to do one like that. Shoot, just a little backward six. That comes off the big curl that we've already mapped out. even darken it up a little bit like we did over here we can darken it up a little bit with some strokes of hair with dark just to give that hair some depth once we put the white on it but other than that we've basically got our little mish pigs hair ready to start doing some white highlights in there we are going to wait for that black to dry, obviously, because it will mess everything up. Again, I have to find a way that I can put the camera straight on, because I'm still painting on angle. Like, the painting is angled away from me a little bit, so it always gets a little wide on the side. There's nothing you can do there, but we get the point across. Okay, and when it comes to our schnoz, let's just, our nostrils... We don't really have to outline the whole thing. See how I basically did two little C's around her nose? Holes? <laughs> her nostrils? Okay. 
Okay. Excellent. So while we, oh, I guess let's outline her ears too. Don't want to mess that up. While we're in the outlining step, we can trace out her little Miss Piggy ears. And again, I'm going to show you close up that I, what I mean by our original drawings are just our base draft, right? Because like, see how originally I drew the ear out a little bit more and when I got to it, I decided I wanted to bring it in a little bit and that's okay. Same with this little ear over, oh gosh, that got a little wobbly on me. Same with this ear over here. Oops. Right, she's getting lined up. And one more thing I think we have to do. Just like how we did here with that dark, we might have to do a couple of strokes of that too. So just do the same outline a couple times. I'm worried that once we put the white on there, there's not going to be enough contrast. Again, this is me being nitpicky and just teaching you how I paint, not properly how to teach someone how to paint. So <laughs> we're figuring it out as she goes. But same thing. Remember always kind of following those brush strokes and following the shapes that we've already laid out. Just drawing them over a couple times. I'll bring it close so that you can see. Okay. Right, I'm just drawing the same line over and over again. So we still want to see that yellow peeking through it. Oh, you guys can't see my pen. Um, you still want to see the yellow peeking through, but we're doing the same line over and again to just kind of create that shadow a little bit. Okay, and while we let that hair dry, let's put some blue in her beautiful eyeballs. I'm just using light permanent blue, light blue permanent, I mean, you don't need much on your palette at all, don't follow what I just, I just put way too much on there. And again, depending on what size of canvas you have, depends what size of brush you should use to fill in those eyeballs. Sorry, I just scratched the camera, I mean microphone with my paintbrush. I'm going to use just a medium all size. We are going to go in with more paint than water. I just always get my paintbrush wet. And again, just fill in that blue spot. Or that white spot that we left over. And like I said, you can fix if you feel like your blue outline was too thick. Paint that blue right over top that outline to make it thinner. Does that make sense? I'll just paint the blue thicker and over top that blue line that's just a little too thick for my liking. Ooh, pretty girl. Beautiful blue bombshell and again just because I am picky Nikki don't worry oh my gosh don't apologize for being missing it you you just got home from out of town you got other things on the go she'll be up on YouTube it's a little bit of a mess today it uh, it got crazy we had to start over don't worry took your kid to the zoo that's lovely you guys probably had a great time What's your favorite part of the zoo? Okay, everybody, with our blue paint on our brushes, we are gonna do her pearl necklace. It's gonna feel weird. You're gonna be like, why isn't it white? Well, we'll put white on top of our blue. But we can start by just putting a circle up where it goes around her neck. So I'm just gonna do a blue circle right there. Nikki's favorite part of the zoo are the crazy monkeys. <laughs> 
I second that. I love monkeys. I love that. So cute. <laughs> um, uh, remember when we were talking about when you're at a circle, if you're above it, you do the upwards curve. If you're below it, you do the downwards curve. Remember that as we're doing this necklace, we want it to curve down and around her neck, kind of like this curve of her chinny chin chin that we've already made. So if that's the first blue circle we made, the next blue circle is going to go down a little bit. And this one's going to go down a little bit. And maybe par. And then maybe now we're going to start going back up again. Right? Right up until it touches that chinny chin chin. Hmm? How is that? Just because I'm a psycho and I always need to put color, if I use one color, I need to put it throughout my painting. I'm just going to put tiny touches of blue in some places here that don't belong, but I, uh, that's what I do all the time. If I use one color, I don't want it to be used in just one spot. I want the painting to be, it to be seen throughout the entire painting. Looks awesome. Okay, thank you. There's been some panic also through. Her eyes are a little far apart. I set us up for failure from the beginning, but we'll figure it out. Right, team? Uh, okay. We have got the blue necklace started, the blue eyes started, her hair has begun. There's some blue pieces added through so that my whatever I want to call it, I don't really know what I want to call it, so that part of me is soothed. <laughs> Um, let's, we're gonna, we have a bunch of white on our palette because that really is our last step is white hair, white eyelashes and, the, okay, we're gonna do her eyelashes first and then we're gonna go through to the hair. So grab a little bitty brush. It can be tiny, remember, it can be medium size, whatever your smallest brush is you got. And we are gonna paint some eyelashes. Let's go zoom. Y'all know I'm a sucker for eyelashes. And Miss Piggies are the best, and they're so easy. They're literally just, they're hardly even curled. They're just lines. Right? Let's just go right here and just start fanning out those lashes. And again, remember lightly, like I'm resting my hand against my canvas as long as there's no wet paint where I'm resting my hand. And I am just lightly using just the tip of my paintbrush. They are just like mine. Is that why I'm biased to them? <laughs> they actually are when I look at them through here. Hey, that's eyelashes like Miss Piggy. Let's go. That's a dream. So again, see how I'm pulling across the canvas? We're kind of fanning out as I go across. It was like up and out, up and out, coming out this way. Pretty thick baseline. You're going over a lot of that purple that we put down for eyeshadow, right? When you're trying to see where to put some shapes and stuff you can look at. Like, look at how much purple there was, and now look how little purple's left here. We've covered a lot of it. All right? Already, adding those eyelashes in there have made her look so... I'm going to need to make them even more long and obnoxious than she even has them in there. Because why not? That's fun. And then if you think you made them too thick, you can go back in with a little bit of purple. Remember, nothing's permanent. You can fix anything. If you're doing this on YouTube, because if you're doing it here, you could ask me here. But if you're doing it on YouTube and... Something feels weird or off to your painting. It doesn't feel right. You can always send me a message and be like, what's going wrong? What can I fix? And I will help you. Sometimes you just need a second pair of eyeballs. Ooh, girl, check out them lashes. Whoo -wee. Let's do the other ones too. You can start on the end for these ones. They went just out. Right, get them fluffy 
the flashes going. And like I said, her eyes aren't perfect. And what's the makeup rule? Like, make your eyebrows twin sisters, not twins. I feel like we could say the same about her eyelashes. Oops. And again, too, it's like, oh, do you think her pupil's a little too small now? Well, you can go back in. You can make it bigger if you want. Right? There's no rules. There's no permanency. You can always fix, tweak, touch, whatever, anything up. Okay, let me zoom out here. Look at that little angel. Sweet, precious cupcake. While we still got that black on our brush, we can just do a couple little lines underneath our pearls here before we put the white on them. See how I'm just... And again, rough, because that's how we do it around here not clean and precise. I'm just doing a little outline just on the bottom. Okay. Oops. I'm just messing things up over here being picky. Okay. So we've got cute little Miss Piggy eyeballs. We need white as kind of our final, final. I feel like I haven't pushed that red enough. Again, you can push detail as far as you want. If you, this is what I mean by not pushing it red enough. Like I'm just gonna go in, wait till I do it if you want to or not. I'm just gonna go in with water down red. Just like a touch of lipstick on there. Just feel like the red wasn't enough. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe it's too red. Maybe ignore everything I do. Use a Sharpie or a paint pen. Yes, 100%. If, if you're somebody who wants to be doing lots of paint nights or want to paint more, I highly suggest, I highly suggest paint pens. I don't suggest it if you just want to casually paint for fun. It's not worth investing a bunch in. Art supplies if it's just casual, but if it's something that you want to like keep doing, keep doing it. If there's something you want to keep doing, sh paint pens will really help um, when it comes to like outline and stuff like that. I use them in every single painting I do, literally every single painting, especially my black and white paint pens. I use Molotow if anybody cares. But, okay, that's, see what I mean by just, like, I wanted to just bump up her, like, rosy cheeks a little bit more. And, like, this shadow down here a little bit more if you wanted to. And I'm just doing that with a watered-down red. But I made it look like her lip's bleeding. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. <laughs> okay. Okay, so our last steppies. Um, let's actually do the background quick first before we do the white of her hair so we could do some white wispies of her hair. Again, this background's like a pinky color with some purple in it. You don't have to do that if you want. I think it looks great. What this Mr. Thomas Webb chose was perfect. I'm going in with a big old chunky brush. I'm gonna go into red or my pinky red, whatever I did the dress with, I guess. It doesn't show up nice on screen and I don't like that. But I am going to just roughly, like I like that painterly rough look. So just a little bit of water, more paint than anything. I'm just gonna schlob on this paint up to her ear. And I'm going to do it all of this color and I'm going to bring that purple back in after. Oh, Justin, I missed your look at that cutie comment. Uh, thank you. She is a little cutie. Again, remember, this is just rough, loosey-goosey. 
You can even add more water into it if you want a little more like that tie-dyed effect look. Sometimes I come close to, but not touching. Sometimes I do touch her. Like, look, this red is going down her hair. I kind of like that. I might even make one go down over there. Over where? Over there. And again, right, we want to cover up that we, like, made her ear smaller later. And this red background is just covering up that whoopsie right and then I'm gonna go in with that purple just like in the reference photo I really right when Cinderella sent me this I was like oh that's a good one that's a good painting I really like how this artist works I look at a bunch of the other stuff it's great very fun painterly beauty okay I'm going right into my purple just blending it in a little bit on the top. I swear the color, <laughs> I sound so insecure about it today, but it's just so crazy the color difference on my, what I'm seeing in my face to what you guys are seeing on screen, very different. And again, the reason we're doing the outline right now, of the background right now, you know that I usually like to do the background last. That's because with our last step of those wispy white blonde hairs, we kind of want them to go over top of this painted background to make it look even more wispy. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is, but trust me that we want that. <laughs> okay. All right. It kind of, her dress kind of blends into it more than I want to. Yeah. Oh, well. So while we let that dry a bit, it can be a little wet when we're doing it, but we want it to dry relatively good. We are going to get our white out and do some more white highlights and then the hair and that's Danito. Finito, <laughs> not Danito. So again, get on a little baby brush out. Dab, dab, dab some of that background out. Oh, I'm getting black on it though. Let's see what happens. Sure. Dab, dab, dab. Oops. Just keep making more messes. What time is it? 9.09. .09. Ay, caramba. That's okay. We're further along than we could be. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get pure white onto our little baby brushes. And remember, you've got that one light circle in her eye. Look at how cute she gets immediately. What is it? What is it about that white eye highlight that just makes everything chef's kiss and with that white we're gonna go into these balls and we're gonna cover like what's an easy way to explain this get on into these balls down here everybody and you're gonna f do basically just like a dot of white on the top half and a dot of white in the bottom half see how it's kind of like we're not filling in the whole thing we want to see the blue at the top and the bottom but we've got a line at the top. It looks like we're almost painting little C's inside of the white balls we've already drawn. Little C. Little C. All right, again, it doesn't have to be precious or precise. Like, our eyes are going to know, like, oh, that's a pearl necklace that she has on. It's very obvious. And by adding a little bit more of that highlight in there just adds a little bit more the word I say all the time depth and dimension you guys but how's that that's cute all right okay And 
again with like highlights. We can go in with white just right before we go back into that hair to finish it off. We have the light tanned highlights that we did, but you can go back in with a tiny touch of white if you want, of a white highlight. Again, remember, it's like don't cover up all the work you've done before, but we can add a smaller line of that pure white right here. In her ear, if you want. Oops. On her dress, if you want to like accentuate like the hem or something. Right. Again, don't have to. This is just kind of nitpicky touching around before we add some of those wispy hairs in there. Another one. That's dust. I don't know why that's been in my head all day. Even on her nostril, if you want to make it pop out a little bit more, in that one spot that you didn't put a black line, you can put a white line. You can zoom into that too if you need here. All those little touches coming together. Okay. And let's make those white flippy hairs. Does she look like Miss Piggy? Yes, yeah, she does. Yes, yeah, she does. Okay, when it comes to these white flips of hair, again, when it comes to you as an individual, you can bring up the detail as much as you want. You can do these steps as many times as you want with yellow with a little bit of white, with a little bit of more white, with a little bit of more white to add as many layers as you want. But we're just going to go for it with pure white here. A pointed brush is going to help you a lot with this. We are going to, I don't know, I'm so off camera today. We're going to go into our white, and we do want a good chunk of water in there so that it's a little translucent and it pulls well. Not that chocolate milk consistency that we we're doing all the other times. We want it to be just watered down more than usual. And we're going to go and start again always following these like little directions that we've already placed maybe i should zoom right like we've already kind of laid out the directions that all these hairs should be going right we curve with the shapes that we've already drawn right and we're flailing them out and this is what I mean by going over our background, right? You can flail individual hairs out there if you want. Justin's checking, my man. How's everybody doing? Any questions, any concerns at this stage? Especially the few of you painting along today really help. When I'm teaching paint nights and I'm not with you guys, it's hard for me to know like if I taught something weird, right? That unless I'm seeing your painting, like that you, um, that I explained something in a way that is confusing or that didn't like translate properly. So when I can't see your paintings, it's hard for me to know if I'm just leading you astray. All right, but see how I'm bringing this watered down white. Again, I'm kind of going over some of those outlines that we did with that black. I'm being pretty loose with it, but we're curling shoop, her hair through those yellow pieces. See if we created that curl, but because it's yellow down the background, it's why we can see that. If it, we didn't do that yellow steps first, we wouldn't, it would just be white on white and it wouldn't look like anything. Same here, if you have a paint marker, awesome. You can paint marker some of these. I would suggest to paint watery paint some of them um but a paint marker can work for some steps too again when there's no questions usually it means that you're just painting your life away and that's fine but 
let's see. I'm oh, I'm just painting not on screen like a jerk. All right, you still want to show the yellow, but we're getting those wispy locks. Come up to the other sides. We're just doing wispy white. The camera's really washing it out, but what can you do? And the wispy hairs, wispy hairs, always showing your work from underneath. You can do some thicker, some thin. Variety's great. Hair's wild. But we're always kind of acknowledging like those first initial shapes that we did, right? Because that helps tell us where we wanted the hair to go in the first place. And remember, pull it on over top of the background if you want. Nerdlandia! Oh my goodness. That's a name I haven't seen in a long time. Hey! How are you doing? Oh my goodness, Nerdlandia. Let's go. Some of you here might remember Nerdlandia too. Some people painting along. Throwback Thursday for sure. Yeah, see, Justin's here. Oh my gosh. Caffeine days, man. I'm just once a month back here. So it's crazy that that worked out that way. See, I'm only here. The last Thursday of every month is when I come back. Curling. Little hair. So funny. What are you up to now? Are you streaming on something else these days? And still just a curling. My background's still a little wet, so I'm not gonna um go too much on the background yet like when I was saying you want to wisp those hairs back and curls them around she just looks like a little Marilyn Monroe been on Twitch and you moved because you were in the state of New York, right? Yes, 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 yes. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Excellent. And are you enjoying wherever you are now? Curly hair. I'm just going through, making those wisps. Remember when I was talking about... The outlines are going to be okay on the side because we're going to go over them. See how the white's gone over them a little bit. Soften them out a tiny touch. Just a tiny touch. And see what I mean by the mixing that color would be so hard. I'm going to just try one thing. I'm going to see what doing... If we bring whatever yellow you were using with a touch of black in it, it's like a sin, a color theory sin to mix with black. But I'm just going to see if that will help us bump up some of those shapes. Because basically she is done. But again, like her hair, especially on the camera, again, in person doesn't look as blown out. But I'm just going to see if I mix a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of black with a little bit of that yellow that I was using originally and going into some of those spots that I want to darken up. Right, you can. It's not the most pretty color, but if you feel like she's going a little flat, like there, you're losing a little dimension in the hair, you can go in with a little tiny touch of black into whatever yellow you were using originally for her hair. Do you see how it's just kind of bumping it up a tiny bit? Again, not a step that anyone has to do by any means. I'm just trying to solve some problems if people are feeling like their hair's coming out a little flatter than it should be. And when I say a tiny touch of black, I mean a tiny touch. Like you don't want, the black will overpower it very easily in a second. 
But again, whenever I'm using this color, I still am following the directions. My brush strokes are following the directions that we've already laid out in those initial shapes, right? Because we want to keep that flowy hair going. Cinderella, how did we feel about breaking it down the hair and then getting to this point? Does it like, did it flow naturally or was a step confused? So good to see you too, Nerdlandia. It has been like at least a year. At least a year. You still have my art on your wall? Love to hear it. I forgot you sweet angel ordered something from me. I sent you some goodies. The hair was way easier. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. And remember, if you ever want to put anything on super lightly, translucently, you just want to add more water to your brush. Okay, and then remember one of those wispy hairs on the outside? I am going to show you what brush to me works best when it comes to like hair or long thin lines. Not only a small brush, but a small brush that's like long. See how this has a long, lots of hair while this is thin, but just shorter. Do you see that in there? See how this one's nice and long? That will help you do wispy lines and long hair. Like it's easier to do hairs that way. So again, water down, paint a little bit, decide where you want to go outside the edge. Sorry, I'm going so far over today, over the nine o'clock. But right with that long brush, do a little swoop of a hair. And again, it's playing with that pressure, playing with the tip of the brush. So not pushing down too hard or pushing down a little bit harder to get a variety of uh, width in your stroke. I think she's looking pretty cute. Maybe some more wispies on the side. Just make those luscious locks Oh, one person we missed today was Dresden. Hope he's well. Well, I think we've got to miss Piggy, folks. Um, again, just trying to think of problems that people may be having. Again, if you feel like maybe you want to bump up her hair a little bit more, you can go back in with your pure yellow, right? You don't need to only do these white wispies. You can also do yellow ones if you want. Again, water will be your friend a bit. You don't want chocolate milky, but you want to be able to move around a bit. Got some yellow strokes in there. Whoops, went over her face a bit. That's fine. All right. I also feel like glitter, like I don't know why I don't have any glitter over here for her. She's obviously the perfect, obviously the perfect gal to be yellowed. I mean, what am I saying? Glittered. <laughs> See how my brain just tuned out there for a second. I'm just fluffing around this little yellow hairs. She's looking pretty cute. Um, one difference of ours to our reference photo, obviously other than her hand being right there, but there is a lot more shading in the reference photo, obviously than in ours. Like you can, if you felt like it, you can, this is an outline in the original, but there's more definition of shapes, right? Like you can outline here if you want, like outline her snout more if you feel like it. But you don't have to, even on here if you want, right? You don't, 
You can push as far as you want. You can do this red technique a little bit more in between her face like that if you wanted to or underneath her eyes. But realistically, I think we've got most of the things down. Hey, is there anything like jumping out at anybody? Anything that you hate on yours? Anything that you want help with? I'm just going to show you doing that red. Right, I'm doing that very watered down red. And I'm just going to bump up where some shadows are in the picture. Very lightly. Right? That's really the main difference is that his is a little bit more valued, which is okay. How do we feel about her? Oh, details that I've also missed. Again, depending how detailed you want to get. Her eyeballs have like little lines in them too that we can do. Oh gosh, that line was not, that ain't it. I made it super wobbly in the wrong spot. When you guys see me go in there like that, like I get a rag wet and I rub out the spot that's like a wet paint that is a mistake. Sometimes if you get it quick right away, you can wipe it off usually. Again, acrylic paint, not, um, not oil by any means, but with oil paint, there's a little bit of room for error. Okay, I'm just nitpicking you guys. I'm just nitpicking. I know there's only a few people painting along today, so you, I'm on your time, people. If you need my help, now is the time. And then we'll thumbnail some stuff out. What do you think my thumbnail should be? Like, am I Mr. Frog today? Like, am I Kermit? Mr. Frog. I was thinking of Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> Roger Rabbit. Am I Kermit today? really know what I should do. Mm -hmm. And if you want to outline these little guys, you can. Kate okay, the lines in her eyes is what I was just saying, and then we can say she's complex. They should be like a darker blue. If you have dark blue, that's cool. I'm just gonna add <laughs> black to blue like a cheater because I'm lazy today. And I've already, it's already 9.30, time's a flying. The lines in her eyes are literally just lines in her eyes. Um. Can you even see them from there? Just like cutting up a pizza pie. It's your eye like a big pizza pie that some more. Oh, you cutie little patootie. Huh? What am I looking at? Other than a little bit of wide eyes, her eyes being a little far apart, I think she's pretty cute. You guys see I'm just picking away until I hear something, but I'm just going to... Darken that eyeliner up. Oh, Miss Piggy. She was just on RuPaul's Drag Race recently, wasn't she? I feel like I just saw her there. Assassin. Assassin RuPaul. Like the diva she is. Oh, 
All right. Well, if I don't hear anything, I might as well just get to thumbnailing. Right? Oh, I just got uh, an email. Oh, I just got an important email that I got distracted on. We'll read that after. Um, let's see here. Oh my goodness. Where am I? Why is it on the wrong? Hey, hey, hey. It's on the wrong video. Hold on. How's this? Does that come back? Look at her! I love her! Cute little angel! Where am I on here? I love her! So cute! I would literally say the only difference is her snout might need to be a little bit darker just to differentiate from here. You know what I mean? Just this circle? But other than that, she's perfect though. Look at that little cutie. Don't you think it looks like she's like taking a selfie? That's what I picture when I look at it. I love it. I love it. Oh, what did I get here? I'll read them on here first. Let me see, let me see. Do, do, do. Okay, okay, okay. I bought the wrong, what did she say? I brought the wrong paint. I bought the wrong paint and ended up with watercolor, so the highlights didn't turn out at all. But that's okay, look how cute she is! They all literally look like she's like taking a selfie. And I live for that, like with the side turn. She turned out so cute, I live. I live. Oh my gosh. Thanks to both of you. There isn't one in here. That's okay. I live. I live. You guys, good job. How do we feel about our Miss Piggies? I think they turned out so cute. These little divas. Let me get to my thumbnail here. Hey, why is this light the worst? Okay, who am I gonna be with Miss Piggy today? She's on this side. I feel like I have to be like Kermit the Frog, or am I Miss Piggy too? I can just smile with Miss Piggy and become one with her. Let's see, where should she go? I can kiss her. Something in there will be good. Me as Miss Piggy for sure. So just two of us, like her as Miss Piggy and me over here as Miss Piggy. Done. Easy. Photoshop just makes that step great. Ah! Well, everybody, thanks. Oh. Thanks for coming to my one Thursday paint night, you sweet little angels. Who knows what we'll be painting next month? I can't think that far ahead. I have a million things on the go at the moment. But I appreciate you always. Send me a line if there's something you want to paint that you find that you like. Um, I'm always up for ideas. I'm always up for online paint nights too. I'm always up for all these other things. Just send me an email at hello at tatacy.com. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Caffeine. Follow me wherever i'm all over the place <laughs> and with that you guys i'll catch you on the flip side and we will see you next month bye everybody